In this tutorial, I'm going to show you five useful filters that you can apply to your next project. So I've been using the Smartsheet for a while now and I found there's a lot of useful features within the tool. And one of the things I like doing when I'm managing my projects is filtering and all the open tasks. And here I've developed five specific filters that I'll show you today. We'll focus on the in-process task filter, the late finish tasks filter, project milestones, resource assigned, and the task missing baseline filter. To start out with the in-process tasks, you can go ahead and modify your filters by clicking on the filter menu. And here, if I click on the edit icon, you'll see how the in-process task filter is built. So this is set up to show where percent complete is not equal to one, and percent complete is also greater than one, and it matches for all conditions. In this particular filter, I choose to use the include parent rows because it helps to identify and show uh, visibility of where the task actually aligns within the overall project schedule. So here this shows me all my tasks that are actually are in process because there is a percent complete that is active on it. Now the next filter is, I want to talk about the task missing baselines filter because what this task does, or rather this filter, it shows me which tasks are missing a project baseline. Now in Smartsheet, it, not like Microsoft Projects, so it doesn't have a baseline start and baseline finish field by default. What I had to do was actually create a baseline start and baseline finish column in my Smartsheet. And when my project was ready to be baselined, I simply copied all the start and finish dates from the start and finish columns and pasted them over into the baseline start and finish columns. So one of the quality checks I run is to make sure the, any of the tasks that are missing a baseline have been correctly identified. And here in this case, these are just the higher level phases. So I'm not as concerned about those tasks having a baseline start and finish date. What I want to look at are the individual work or task packages to make sure that those tasks have a valid baseline. Once that's done, you can actually run the late finish tasks filter. And the way this filter has been built is it looks at the baseline finish date and tries to determine what are all the tasks that should have finished by a given date and where the percent complete is not equal to one or 100%. So in this case, I'm looking for all the tasks that should have been completed by April 3rd and where the percent complete is not equal to one, it identifies all the different tasks that you see above. Now I can change that date. If I move it ahead a little bit, now you'll see there's additional tasks that are running behind. And I use this filter to help identify what are all the tasks that are running late and how should I be following up with my team to understand you know, where they are and how are they going to be forecasting against new dates. And remember, your start and finish dates, those will always adjust, but the PM has to go back in and compare the dates against the baseline to see is it recoverable and can you bring the project in on time based on the original baseline finish date. So just to show you that again, you see here that we're simply setting the baseline finish date is less than or equal to a given date that you select and the percent complete is not equal to one. Again, I also include the parent rows in this example. The next one to look at are resource assigned. So the resource assigned task, this is useful in one leveling your project, as well as identifying all the different tasks that are assigned to a given resource. So here, this task, I open this filter up and you'll see here that it is assigned to one of, and you can select from any of the users within your project schedule. Now in this case, you can also look to see where's there a blank user. And if there's any tasks that are missing an assigned resource, you can go ahead and use this to determine who's actually going to be completing those given tasks. Now here, what I have remaining are milestones as well as higher level um, tasks. So I'm not as concerned about assigning a resource to those uh, deliverables. So from this view, I at least have the proper resources that are, are, are properly assigned. Now, when I go back into the filter, you know, I'll also take a look and see you know, where do we have any other issues around any other resources. Uh, but it's another useful way if you're going to send resources to the tasks that they need to be working on, looking at resource leveling, or just in general getting a feel of, of who's doing what when you're updating your project schedule and making appropriate tweaks. When I do resource forecasting, this is also helpful to get a sense of 
what is the uh, the timeline that these resources are going to be working against and what are the key dates where I need these resources to, to plug in. That's especially helpful when you're working with a pool of resources that are fractionally allocated to your project. So again, this is built by simply uh, assigning, picking the assigned to column, it's one of, and you pick the specific user that you're looking for. Now you can also pick specific users, more than one, uh, so you get a whole list of the users here. It works like a, another filter similar to what you see in Excel. And then finally, the last filter that I want to share with you is the project milestones filter. Now, a project milestone is by definition a zero duration task. So this filter is simply picking up the zero duration milestones and it's built by creating a filter that shows the duration is equal to zero. Now, there's a couple different ways you can do this, use this filter. If you want to just get a milestone list or if you need to see it within the parent rows that shows you all the milestones that are set up within a given phase. Now I've also used another filtering technique is building a status milestone filter because there's sometimes you'll have zero duration milestones in your project schedule and you may not want to show that uh, those milestones in given status reports. But you may want to identify other tasks that are relevant for a status report. So to do that, I would just build a project milestone uh, status filter. So I'll say project milestone status. And I've created a custom field called status milestone. And I'll simply indicate that it is set to yes. So now by using this filter, I'm able to focus on only the milestones that I want to share with my uh, stakeholders via the project status report, even though they have a zero duration. Now, technically any task that you flag with a yes would appear in this filter or in this report mechanism, uh, but this is one effective way to call out milestones that you wanna share on a status report versus the ones that show up with just a zero milestone duration.